Kopu. Hi, Natasha. How are you doing, my sister? I'm fine. I'm fine, at least. We thank God for his mercies. Yes, and we thank so God for the support and prayers from good, uh, for the good Nigerians. My regards to Chief and the baby. How's the baby? It's fine. He was here. He just went to his room. I'm here with him in the village. <laughs> hey. So what happened? I hear say, government, go break roads. Is it true? It's true. Um, how it went was, um, it started two nights ago. At about 11 p.m., I got a call from someone who works in the Ministry of Works, Kogi State. He told me that, look, they have been mobilized and instructed to cut off some roads. And then I asked, which roads? Send me your location so we can get the police there. The next thing we didn't hear from the person, his lights were switched off. So we woke up yesterday morning at about 8 o'clock. Hey, network, network, network. This is not the time for you not to walk. Yeah. And then... <laughs> The oh. gentleman called me back and I asked him, why didn't you send your location? We were going to at least send a team to stop the excavation of the roads. And he told me that all their phones were seized. That the moment they saw him make a call, the construction, the person in charge who supervised the construction seized off all their phones. And that indeed they walked all night cutting three roads. So um, we got the pictures. We started making... Um, some publications about it. And then we were told again that they had moved to a road near mine, which was making the Fort Road. At that point, I got some of my supporters and I went there and I made the live video. While I got there, they ran away. They had just finished excavating by the time I got to the site and I made my live video. And then we have, we do have, I do have some construction equipment here at home. So I took a payloader over there and refilled it just put, put the sand back so that it would be at least more durable. They didn't stop there. They went to another road which connects my village to Ondo State. It's called Ihima Ayere Road. They cut that road off again. And they finished uh, excavating that road at about 9 p.m. last night. Mm -hmm. And so by as early as 5 a.m. this morning, we went in there and we covered that road. So we have covered two roads remaining. a bit much later um we're expecting some security officials so they would accompany the vehicles there so we can cover the road the reason why we must cover these roads is because it will pose a difficulty for tomorrow's election because INEC office is just there in a town called obangidi and i have been cut off from obangidi so obangidi's INEC serves my community ihima and i will oh. tell you this ever since these roads have been cut off since yesterday and throughout today, it's been difficult for people to commute to go to work. For people, you know, these petty traders who usually spend 15 naira transporting themselves, they now have to go around the other local governments, which will take almost like 40 minutes or one hour to get their products to the market. So life has been very difficult for people in my communities since yesterday and today. In short, we, when I called the DPO, um, of my community, he couldn't leave. He said, Natasha, I can't access you because the road has been cut off. And what does that mean? That in times of danger, my community, I'm cut off from um, security services. And um, yeah, because of this, we had to go around. Uh, we made them, uh, um, we put the information out. And I'm so glad with the amount of shares we received and concerns. And you know what? It's funny how the state government put out a statement acknowledging this that they actually cut the roads and they said that was a security measure my brother daddy freeze who cuts roads because cut of security road? like okay that means with due respect to our fellow Igbo brothers that means because of the ipod crisis we should blow up the uh, onisha bridge okay because of the uh, Boko Haram insurgency in Adamawa, Borno states, we should cut off all the roads. Because of in, the Kaduna, Abuja kidnapping, we should, we should blow up all the... We should blow... Exactly. We should blow up all... We should shut down all schools because of bullying. Who does that? As a matter of fact, cutting roads breeds insecurity. And let me tell you, out of these five roads, two of them are federal highways. Two of them are 
federal highways. So Yaya Bello actually cut federal highways. Like, it's not mind cut, you know, deep gullies. Like, if you put in a car, a car will actually sink in. And my fear is that the rain's about to start now. Believe me, if, you know, I told you, we just put in some sand. This, this roads need urgent attention because they won't be much able during the rainy season, I tell you. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. I tell you. <laughs> and let me tell you something. People I ask want... me, how about the security agencies? Yes, we, call, we notified the, the chief of uh, defense staff, we notified the DSS, we notified the inspector general of police. Everybody's aware. When they call the governor, the governor puts a poise that this is his state, he is the chief security officer, and they should allow him do what he thinks is best to secure his people. Do you understand? So he puts a fund that now prevents the national, the headquarters, all the service chiefs from acting and accepting his actions. And that's terrible. Whatever it is, however the constitution is drafted in that, we must review it. Because I don't think a governor should have absolute control. That means to kill whoever he wants to kill in his state because he's the chief security officer and he determines who is a terrorist. Okay, you know what? About four days ago, there was a bomb blast in my same community about uh, 10 minutes ago. 10 minutes, 10 minutes uh, drive from here. A bomb blast that destroyed the treasury of the Okehi local government secretariat. Now, what I got to know is that allegedly um, most people feel that it was Yaya Bellows and his goons that set up the bomb to blame me. They thought I was going to be in town at that point, but I just arrived um, two days ago in the evening. So I wasn't around at the point time of the bomb blast. Then they quickly wrote a petition that they should question the PD, Natasha and her PDP supporters about the bomb blast. So he's saying that because of that, he has cut off the roads around me. But let's say this. There were two bomb blasts last year in Okene, that is the governor's town. One is the famous bomb blast at the Ohinois Palace. I'm sure you're aware of it. When the day before President Buhari visited Okene to commission some projects, there was a bomb blast at the palace that destroyed part of the palace and killed three people. Why didn't Jaya Bello cut off the roads in Okene? Mm. Right? There was another bomb blast earlier last year doing some traditional, uh, some cultural display. There was a bomb blast in the same Okene. Why didn't he cut off the, the, the roads there? Why did he have to cut off the roads two days to election and the roads are still like, we're just 12 hours away from the election and the roads are still cut off three main roads. So is that how to copy the security? Well, to me, I just keep saying that. By Yahya Bello's actions, he keeps exposing his inadequacies. Nigerians are now beginning to see how he has run Kogi State. Little wonder EFCC is after him. Little wonder five of his relatives are right now chilling in Koje prisons while his wife is on the run. Anyway, let's see. Yes. yes, his wife is also at large. The lady who acts as a first lady, didn't you read that? Go to EFCC's website, you will see. She's actually wanted for money laundering. Money laundering. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> this could say come past every other place for Nigeria. I tell you, and we're such a great state. We have such beautiful personalities. We're extremely blessed and with resources, but we have been unfortunate with leadership. And I pray that we're going to get it right. So I'm hoping that it starts with my victory. So everybody, I'm praying that by this time tomorrow, that it freeze. <laughs> I can't wait to be victorious because I'm going to be a strong, purposeful voice, not just for the people of Kogi Central, but the entire country. I tell mm, you, whichever I, committee I serve, Nigerians will know that Nigerians will actually feel the impact and the presence of a very effective, knowledgeable, and competent senator. Mm, They'll be proud. Mm, I tell, tell you this. <laughs> I'm actually waiting. I'm so excited. I'm, 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 I'm a bit worried. Uh, I know a lot of good people from Kogi State like you, yeah. Dino Melai. Uh, what is Senator Dino saying about this? Honestly, I saw his text message yesterday. And Natasha, what am I hearing? I tried to call him back after two hours. I couldn't reach him. Till now, I've not spoken with him. But I did speak to a lot of people like Senator Tunde Ogbeha. He was able to reach the, you know, some top people in the security agencies. Uh, we have quite a lot of um, influential people here who are not even in politics, some SANs, um, some diplomats, and they have all been of great support. 
everyone beyond party platforms we have people from labor party from even apc themselves who have said natasha you know what we might differ politically but we are with you on the same political ideology and we stand we apologize for our governor's mis misactions so many of them in the states are not even with him i tell you and the rumors mm. you keep hearing that he's not with tinibus camp it's true they don't want him in tinibus camp yes he's not with i'm telling you yes oh. it's a um, Honore Bufaleke is actually leading Tinubu's campaign here. Oh, oh wow. Not Yayabelo. He's just trying to push himself in. No, but have you ever seen pictures of himself? Oh, have, when last did you watch any video of Yabelo attending the presidential rally, Tinubu's presidential rally? He's never invited now. <laughs> oh, wow. Please. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. learning a lot now, guys. Uh, Natasha is married, though. And she has to give it. Because people are saying, oh, Yes, please. Take chief, no call carry you. Because when I called Natasha, hey, Natasha, how are you? What's going on? Come, come, come. Let me go that chief. Say, where are you going? I had to give, I had to say she's coming to my life, but she's not going anywhere. I'm telling you, let me even, this is my village. So those of you who have wondered about, who have heard about Iberia land, we actually have a very beautiful landscape. So this is my village home. Let me show you outside. I should take you around. This is my veranda. We made like a little garden, a sit out. Hold Woo! on, Nigeria. So I'm saying this because once I become a senator, I'm going to invite all of you here to tour. This is my community here. This is our oh, city. Like London, huh? more Dubai. Yeah, it's very, we made it, it's beautiful. And this is a hill, which we are going to make like a hiking spot. Can you see the, oh, Anita, I wish I can show you. This is all a hill behind here. So, which we actually own. We acquired the hill about five years ago. We want to make it like a resort in future so that when the good people of Nigeria come to visit me, we'll have like little cabanas on the hills like it is in Kenya. So they visit. Now, let me take you to my son. So you see, those of you who keep saying, how do I manage politics with motherhood? Yeah. Huh? I've only seen him. You know, each time I call you, we never get to do video call. Yes. So this Hello, is the where's the baby? Yeah. Want to do daddy freeze? This is my son's room. Where is he? Hi, Ray. Hey, Oimbo Pepe. Yeah. Not chief. Hi, not baby. chief. You don't resemble you. Come on. You don't resemble me. <laughs> where are you, Ray? Tell me for his trouble. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi, Hello, Ray. God, yeah. Hello. Hey, the boy is too fine, oh. Now, are, they, are they born fine picking? What do you expect? All now? your children are fine. <laughs> but this one collects more from Chief. Look, I work. Look, I look for him. Oh. Who? Chief? Chief? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> let me take you guys. Hold on. Let me take you. You know they're having a meeting, so let me take you all. Hold on. Hold Woo! on. So just a few who are saying, oh, Nigerian politicians don't take, I go around campaigns with my baby, with my son. Mm. Even my other kids, when they were on holiday, they followed me for campaigns. Because it's important they understand our political culture. I'm going around, I walk in this place. So my, my hometown, Ibrahim Land is very beautiful. Just don't mind. I think I've been there. Activities. Hold on. Are they in here? Okay, so we're going. This is still my village home. We have little, a lot of chalets for visitors. Oh, my man. So, see how. So. Hello, everybody. Daddy Freeze wants to say hello to you. So, these are my political leaders. I'm actually looking for chief. This is my party chairman, my uncle. Take over. This is the House of Assembly candidate, Honorable Skinner. We are live. My just are watching you. This is a House of House of Reps candidate, Honorable Puffy. This is Uncle. Okay, Sally, who is my father's best friend. And this is our party chairman, he's my uncle. So they are here having a meeting. Where's Chief, please? Oh, uh, and I'm looking for him. He needs to say hello to Nigeria so they'll know that. So they'll understand what a supportive husband he is. Yes, yeah, so. Because I, I keep telling people, why is Chief? My love! Come, Daddy Freeze wants to say hello to you. Nigerians want to say hello to you. Because, you know, there's a lot of questions about women in politics and how far they can go with the support of a supporting husband. So this Ooh. is he. 
Yes. See where I carry your wife go. And then, hmm. <laughs> then she's loving the village. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Oh. Yeah, and this is my younger brother too, Sasha. <laughs> my, uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's it. So it's so much fun. There's so much love. You know, I enjoy a lot of support you know, from my family. You what? Sad. When I called you, I saw, but I can see you're all in um, high spirits. You're yes. Happy. They cannot. I'm happy. I'm happy. Not break you. I'm happy because against the odds, the support I enjoy from my community from my political party, both at state and national level, and from my family is enormous. And that is what everybody, every politician needs that. And because I know that I've done a lot of groundwork. Whew. Whew. Hold on, let me catch my breath. I've done a lot of groundwork. I've always been committed and connected to my people. Well, as a social entrepreneur and a philanthropist, so I've built a track record that people know my word. They know that I'm not just coming in to just be available shortly before politics. No, I've always been part of my people's lives. Mm. And so, yeah. And, and, and that is it. Now, for a lot of people who don't know the extent of what happened, this is what they did to the road. That's just one of the roads. It's one of, of the roads. In fact, I should go to your page to get clearer footage from your page. You know? Yeah. Because this, this, this is, this is, this is kind of, it's kind of scary. Should I send you, should I go to WhatsApp and send you some now quickly? Yes. Please, please send to my WhatsApp so I can, I can show them. Please, right now. People need to see this. Man. Huh. Um, on Nigeria, they play politics. Our politics, they different from any other politics in this whole world. As in, we they break root. Um, she's sending the videos already to my WhatsApp. Um, can you see? YouTube, can you see? Government. Now, these are government roads. How, how does the government... Look at another one. Who is going to pay for the repair of these roads? I'm a person who can cast boy for inside the road. Ah, uh, ah, uh, now, nah, wow. Now, nah, wow. Now, nah, wow. Please, if you're watching on tiktok help me reach my target um everybody my number one gifter is babes b for b e double s follow her right now uh whoever is my top gifter will get follows on um tiktok so please join me live on tiktok and watch uh, and send me your gifts um see they see while i'm waiting for natasha to come back she you see her person more to spoil inside the road Romeo, what's going on? How are you doing? Send me gifts on TikTok. Okay, Natasha is back. If you're enjoying the live, go to Facebook, search for Daddy Freeze, D A W D Y F R W E Z E. Scroll to today's video. You will see me with this cap and buy stars to support my channel. So go over to Facebook right now, search for Daddy Freeze, D A W D Y F R W E Z E. And you will see that please scroll to today's video, click on the video, and send stars. I'm healing all of you now. Big shout out to Abdulaziz Fatimat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome stuff. So, was that somebody's car that got ruined on the road? Yes. That, that was one of the three roads that were dug in the night. So that person was driving about 5 a.m. before the day broke. And he didn't know that uh, <laughs> the, the gully has been dug and he drove right into it. They have just taken the light, but don't worry. It's going to come back. Don't worry, on. 
Yeah, that, they even take it from where me I'm doing live, sir. <laughs> nice. Yes. Nice it's better. The Just go. Road. You can see the mountain at the end of the road. That's the. Yes. So how do people go about their business? That's what I say. Life has been very difficult for uh, people in our communities. Actually, two local governments, that is uh, Okehi and Adavi, have been. Hello, can you hear me, Daddy Freeze? Are you there? Yeah, Their life has been swear. very difficult. Even children couldn't go to school yesterday. I tell you. So, because, you know, um, that road, like from my place, Ihima to Obangede, is just 10 minutes. Mm. with without the gully but now with that gully we have to it's going to be like a 40 minutes or one hour journey because we have to go round. and you know my my uh, state is very hilly so you can't just take a bypass like it's very difficult to go around and that's what we are facing but like i said um we're just waiting for some security officials and then we'll go cover the roads up because we need this roads connected so that INEC can conduct the elections timely because the danger is that if the INEC is to take Okene, that's where the governor's town is, they will be intercepted and the materials could be hijacked. And we don't want that to happen. So we must fix this road so that INEC will have multiple routes reaching to us and the police as well. Hmm. Wow. It's quite draconian, it's barbaric, it's anti democratic. Mm. That is it. And uh, I don't think um, the federal government should fold its arms and watch a governor take laws into his hands. This is. No, no. no. This, who's yeah. supposed to repair the, the roads? Ah, who's supposed to repair? It should be the government now. Oh. But let us who's... watch and see. Let's, I don't know. Like, because, okay, he's saying that. Okay, okay, let me ask you a question. You are into road construction, if I remember correctly. Yes. How much do you think? Think it will cost to repair those roads? Give me an estimate. Nothing less than a hundred million naira each. Each. Nothing less than a hundred million naira each. So, so, so we just wasted four hundred. About five hundred naira. Yeah, about five hundred. About nothing less than that. I'm telling you. That's about because the goal is a hundred thousand dollars. That's it. He just wasted. Yeah. Wow. And the thing is that I don't even believe that he's going to fix this road. I don't believe he's going to do that. This is someone that struggled to for seven years. It's just towards the end of uh, President Buhari's tenure that he rushed to complete a few projects which are present commission. And the projects were even what funded by World Bank. It wasn't even out of his own uh, state treasury. So I don't think he's going to fix them. And like I said, I worry about the rainy seasons because what I have just done was just pull the laterite back. I couldn't compress it because some of these roads, all these roads, the Ayabelo court have existed for over 30 years. Do you understand? He didn't make these roads. They've existed. Two of them are highway. One of them, the one leading to, the one, the one leading to Ondo State, because my Hima shares boundary with Ondo State. He cut that road off at 9 p.m. That road, as a little girl, it used to be called the Old Lagos Road. Anybody who knows, before IOT became an option, that was the road people would take when driving to Lagos because you just connect from here, from Ihima to um, Ikare, Owo, and then that's it, Akure. So he cut that road off last night. We had to fix it 5 a.m. this morning. We moved our equipments before they woke up. Wow. Yeah. Oh, let me send you the video of the of the road as we fixed this morning. Hey. Oh, Niger, 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 give me vibe. Anyway, um, Yahaya Bello, my live is available for you if you want to come and explain what's going on. I always like to be excited. I don't know. To you. If you check your WhatsApp, you'll see the video. That's the road and going to be connected. I also hear from Yahaya Bello. Let him also come to the live. Your Excellency Yahaya Bello, come and tell us why you cut the yes. road. Or yes, so. you that cut the road, come and tell us. Come and explain to us. That's the road. We just, just uh, You can see that's... We covered it up at 5 a.m. this morning. That's wow. the one leading to Ikare. So what wow. he did was that just in case there's chaos, we would not have anywhere to run. 
the only exit will be through Okeni. That is through his own town. And let me tell you this. We are hearing rumors. And most of the rumors I've heard have always come true. But this is what he said. That he knows he's going to lose. But then he's going to deal with everybody at that. So he's going to uh, get a lot of guns on the streets. And that while people are celebrating my victory, they will just come killing people. That's what he said. So, and it uh, makes sense because maybe that is why he's cutting all the exit routes. Because let me say this: the route from, from this one that we just fixed, the one connecting my village to Ondo State, has nothing to do with INEC. There's no INEC office there. So why did he cut it? That's because he wants to trap me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The the, the road that connects. The first three he caught at night. But the other ones have nothing to do with INEC. It's just to entrap me so that I will have no escape route in times of emergency. Because if anything goes on now, I can decide to run to Ondo State. Do you understand? There are others, but he cut them all off. He cut them all off. But we had to fix that one just in case. That's the Ondo one. And we have three more to fill up this night. And we are seriously, if you are a member of the security agencies, please, we know you have done your very best. You have all come on Yaya Bello, but he has been stubborn and he's been uh, quite rebellious. He refused to heed to the, na the, the national, what's called the headquarters call. When I mean headquarters, the national security advisors, the DSS, the ID of police, the, the Nava staff, defense staff here. Yaya Bello has, they've all tried to call him to order, but he's, refuse to listen to them so we do appreciate you all but just don't give up on us we are human beings and we all deserve to have a chance to a free and fair elections so please we would call also on the press um, informing nigeria of their right to choose whoever they want to vote for across party lines. You have said that, Mr. President, and that's what we are trying to do. And I think uh, uh, for any governor to want to cow everybody to voting people in his own party, APC, that's wrong. That's wrong. That takes away the freedom of choice, freedom of expression. So mm -hmm. we appreciate the Nigerians. Thank you so much. Like, if not because of the social media and the fact that you all are there to retweet, to make comments and make your contributions, would have just been killed here for nothing. So I can't even imagine the times of, uh, you know, all those maybe like 20, 30 years ago, how people were deprived of airing their concerns, you know, in times of trouble. What kind of lives? How, how was democracy then? So we just appreciate the advent of technology and how well our youths and people are keyed into it. Mm, 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 yeah. mm. All right, all right, all right. So may God be with you and um, Amen. May God protect you. This one don't pass ordinary. I tell you, just be, be careful. Just be extra careful, um, yeah. especially if you're there with your baby. Mm. Me, yes, I know. Me, I, so we've had all sorts of I, threats. Like I, right I, I, now, we're also good. told to be careful that he might throw a bomb. You know how sometimes they just like throw things. We've had all sorts. So we're always on guard. I, I'm wearing glasses because my eyes are swollen. I pretty much didn't sleep at night. I'm just like waiting for any sound or anything. So that's how we've been living here. So I'm also aware that um, they are planning to plant some bombs in some houses near the polling units. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're aware that some security agencies will go scoop the place up before I move in. So mm. that's it. But we're always like on edge. Anything can happen. We're on edge. Anything can happen. But the good thing is that the story is all out. And if anything should happen to Natasha, no, straight away. If anything should happen, if there's any attack against me, is there a Bello straight on? Hmm. Oh, wow. That's it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, of course, um, my platform is open to Yahaya Bello if he wants to come and tell his own side of the story so it does not look like that. If he does not hear I always try to be...
thing as possible. Mm. Um, but this doesn't sound right. And if the government claimed responsibility for digging up the road, and then I'm worried. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, um, what I want the most for the country tomorrow is a safe election. Yes. Um, let everybody go and cast their votes for whoever they deem fit and may the best man or woman win win natasha yes and i'm so looking forward to be there because i need to show you all what women can do that we do have a lot of good capable charismatic competent women so i'm doing this not just for myself but for our women <laughs> all right gentlemen that was natasha um Uduagan, did I got that? Did I get that? Natasha put you Duaha. I'm not leaving my I'm not using my father's name. <laughs> all right. Yes. Great. Thank you all for joining and thank you so and Daddy Freeze, thank you so much. You've been a brother to me. I appreciate you. Thanks for looking out for me. Oh my goodness. I love you so much. And the whole Freeze Nation. Thank you so much. You guys rock. Eh? Uh, uh, love you too sis thank Take you care. i appreciate it. thank you i have to go join my political oh, yeah. meetings now straight away, oh, straight sure. away thank straight away. you bye. 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 bye bye nigerians i love you thank you bye, bye. <laughs>